Hello and welcome back to this 11th lesson of the introduction uh, to trigonometry or the helicopter overview of trigonometry. Uh, we left off discussing the secant, uh, y equals secant of x or secant of theta. And we said that if we forgot what secant is, we can go back to our special um, hexagon, TSC, T sine, cosine. And then the last one will be the secant. The second to last is the cosecant. Across from the tangent is the cofunction, the cotangent. And in the middle is your one. And if you go clockwise, you can say secant equal tangent divided by sine. And tangent is sine divided by cosine. You get rid of your sines. And the numerator and denominator, you're left with the reciprocal function of one divided by cosine of theta or cosine of x. Or we said you can get to it in a different way but it's gonna you know you're gonna yield the same of course of course the same result we say in the middle we have one so on both ends we have secant and cosecant so one equal cosine x times secant x so uh secant theta or x equal one divided by cosine we have a cosine in the denominator same like with the tangent we have something in the denominator so this is when the function has no solution it doesn't exist those are your vertical asymptotes vertical asymptotes happen where when the cosine is you know nearing uh zero when is the cosine gonna near zero at pi over two three pi over two and minus pi over two and this is where at pi over two you know you're you're gonna be before you get to it the cosine is gonna be very infinitesimal very small so you have a one divided by a very tiny a tiny uh, uh, value that is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So the whole thing, the secant goes through uh, uh, plus infinity, of course. And this is where your plus infinity is. And when you have it on the other end at 3 pi over 2, for example, here, you have the cosine uh, 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 nearing in the negatives, nearing um, in the third quadrant in the negative between the third and the fourth quadrant the cosine is nearing zero but it's not going to get to zero okay because if it gets to zero this vertical asymptote becomes tangent and it's a, an impossible solution you cannot divide a number by zero in ordinary math now so basically what we said is the vertical asymptotes you know tell us uh, when there is no solution and then we how we find them we locate the first one is the easiest one the pi over two here and then we add the spread to it what's the spread the spread is where we can you know have this function wiggling or working where does it work between pi over two and uh uh three pi over two or between minus pi over two and plus pi over two because right at the pi over two and the three pi over two we have a break we have this vertical asymptote so the spread between Pi, minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2 is pi or between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 your spread is also pi so the vertical asymptotes are pi over 2 plus n pi however the period is following the cosine this is the reciprocal of the cosine so the period stays at my period is at remember period equal 1 divided by 1 time 1 mission divided by your frequency in math is the b and in the case of the sine and the cosine the first cycle the basic cycle that finishes the the the, the mission is 2 pi so the period is 2 pi however your spread that tells you where this function has variation where is it broken is a pi so your domain in this situation we said is x such as you need to get yourself familiarized if you, not yet with x such as one vertical bar in math means such as x is not equal to the vertical asymptote pi over 2 plus n pi n is an integer negative or positive okay and we said there is something here a little bit more uh, uh, that we need to take into consideration that makes this reciprocal function of a sinusoidal wave which is the cosine uh, uh, function a little bit different we said that we're dividing by the cosine and the cosine in itself is a proper fraction 
That means it's a number, if you take absolute value, that it's less than one. So you're taking a fixed value, not in the case of a tangent, you have a sine divided by a cosine. So you have a proper fraction divided by another proper fraction. Here you have a fixed value, which is one, and you're dividing that by a number that is smaller than one. So the answer is going to be if it's 0 0.25 or one or a quarter, one divided by four, your answer will be four. If it's half, your answer will be two. It will never be more, uh, I'm sorry, less than one. Or it will never, uh, uh, look at the graph here. We did graph it. So it will never be less than one. It has to be more than one. And it has to be uh, uh, less than minus one. That's so between minus one and plus one, we don't have a solution. And that's the difference here in the range. Instead of having a range that is in the case of a tangent, it's what it's uh, minus infinity plus infinity. You know, there is no break as we go vertically. But in the case of a secant, and now we're going to see the cosecant, we do have a break. We go from minus infinity to minus one, including minus one, union the other part, plus one all the way to plus infinity. Now, what happens at plus one? Why plus one is included? Plus one is simply included uh, because at one, what is the cosine of... Uh, um, uh, Cosine, I'm sorry, cosine of zero is one, right? So one divided by one is plus one. That's why you have this plus one here. And the cosine of, let's take this one, it's happening at pi, right? At pi, the cosine of pi is minus one. So one divided by minus one is minus one. That's one, that's why the one and the minus one are included. However, all the values in between are not included. We're just doing a union of what's underneath the minus one and what's above the plus one, including the plus one. Okay, uh, we're going to maybe uh, exercise more by doing the other one, the cosecant, which is very similar. It's just that uh, the spread and the vertical asymptotes are just different. So if I tell you y equal cosecant of x or of theta, Again, if you forgot, you know, you know, there is nothing here that you need to, again, memorize. T for tangent, sine, cosine, your co-function or cotangent right here, cosecant, which in linguistically means next to last, secant is your last, and that's how you do it. I'm sorry, it's not the greatest, uh, the proportion are totally off, but that's the idea. And if I am to go this time this way, where is my cosecant? It's right here. So if I am to go this way, and this is counterclockwise, I get cosecant equal, if I totally forgot, cotangent divided by cosine. And I go uh, to say cosine is, you know, uh, uh, cotangent is what? Is cosine, you keep going if you, if, if you also forgot, cotangent equal cosine, the next one after, divided by a sine and the whole thing is times one divided by cosine so you go like this and this is the reciprocal function of the sine theta or sine x so now we have the sine in the denominator when this is when the function does not have solutions when the sine is this value sine of x is zero when does that happen that happens at zero and pi this is um uh, where uh, the sine is, so it happens at zero. The first one is at zero. So your vertical asymptotes, they go zero plus this pi, pi n. So the domain here is x, such as x is not, I'm sorry, not equal to zero plus pi n, which is pi n, okay? Now, the spread, so, is between zero and pi and 180 degrees this is when you have a break because the sine and in this situation is going to be zero and there will be no solution your period is still the same it's two pi and the spread is uh here let's draw it so let's go and do our 
This is the zero, the y axis. This is our x axis. And let's say, um, um, let's say pi is here, 2 pi is right here, 2 pi, pi. And let's take the minus pi here. So at pi, we have a break because this is when your sign is going to be zero. And um, at zero, we also have a break. So this is the spread between zero and pi. Your spread is pi. It's the same spread, of course, between minus pi and zero, which is a pi. Okay. Now, we also need to take care of our uh, plus one and uh, minus one. So if we say that this is your plus one and this is your minus one, we have the quadrant now. So right here in the middle, we have the pi over two to, you know, finish off with the quadrant and three pi divided by two. So at right here, you know, this is at pi over two, your sign is one. So one divided by one is one. So this is going to be included like the other one. And as sine of zero, what's the sine of zero? Is zero. As it approaches that value, the, the, uh, keeps going, the function itself keep, keeps going to infinity. And this is your quadrant one. This is Q1. So I do have the same sketch, but the spread is different. Over there, it was between minus pi over two and plus pi over two. Or, uh, and, and between pi over two and three pi over two, what made the cosine zero. Here, what the spread is what's gonna make the sine zero, and this function has no solution. So the minus pi, zero, zero, pi, pi, two pi. So let's go here. This is your two pi. So this is my first quadrant, right? First quadrant between zero and pi over two. In the first quadrant, uh, both sine and cosine are positive. Here we're talking about the sine, so that's why it's going into this direction. And as uh, the sine uh, of zero gets to zero, you know, the whole thing approaches plus infinity. Now, in the second quadrant, we have also the sign being positive in the second quadrant. That means, you know, in, in, in the breakup of that vertical, of that total force or total vector or the resulting vector in, in physics, when we broke it up vertically in the second quarter, it's always positive. And here we have one divided by that vertical component, just to relate it back to your mind, that this is all, all interconnected here. Okay, now in quadrant three, what happened at right at three pi over two? At three pi over two, which is the opposite of pi over two, the sign is gonna be minus one. So this whole thing will be one divided by minus one. So we're gonna include this minus one and we're gonna go this way and we're gonna go this way because the sign in both quadrant three, which is here, and quadrant four is negative. Now, if I am to sketch it here, and I, again, I'm going to go through the same thing. I go right here, minus pi over 2, and I, it keeps repeating itself like this. This is a quadrant, a 4 for this previous cycle, and this is a quadrant 3, and this will be a quadrant 2 and a quadrant 1. It repeats itself, and there is no solution between minus 1 and plus 1, okay? So if I am to write, we wrote the domain uh, uh, right here. What did we write the domain? X such as X is not equal to the vertical asymptotes uh, 0 plus pi n. My range R is going to equal what? Minus infinity again, minus 1, including the minus 1, union, plus 1, and all the way to plus infinity. Okay? So in easier terms, if you want to say it this way, y as a function f of x is less than or equal to minus one and this is the union your and y is more than or equal to plus one that's all that we're doing okay this oh i'm lost this is what it is the 
only thing here is that you have a function variation in the domain with the vertical asymptotes and in the range. When we had a tangent and a cotangent, we didn't have a function variation in the range. The tangent was sine divided by cosine. Small proper fraction divided by a small proper fraction. We kept getting the same repetition from minus infinity all the way up to plus infinity. However, here we have a with the secant and the uh, cosecant, what do we have? We have a fixed value being divided by a small proper fraction. So that narrows our uh, y function to everything that is above the plus one and underneath the minus one. Okay? And your period, of course, stays at 2 pi because it follows the sign. Now, well, from that, we're going to actually, uh, as promised, we're going to go to the inverse uh, functions because they're also very, very important because we do a lot of arc sine and arc cosine to get the, the angle back, right? So remember we said we need to restrict a function. First, the function has to pass the horizontal line test, not the vertical, the horizontal line test. And we'll, I always go back and I use some simple function. The easiest one to conceptualize is always y equal x squared and I say you know this one you know in order it doesn't pass the uh, horizontal line test so basically we need to restrict its domain uh, it's just common sense because if you're comparing one to one you know and since those uh, uh, trick functions are periodic on real numbers on the real numbers they're periodic right so they repeat and repeat and repeat endlessly so if you are if you come here and you want to conceptualize all these waves that are endless how am I gonna catch the endless and flip it and reflect it over y equal x that doesn't make any sense so that's why you need to restrict the domain um, if they're not because there are, they are, they are not one to one on their domain. We need to restrict the domain. If the domain is restricted, they will have a unique inverse function. Okay. So in the case of y equal x squared, if we say x positive or equal to zero, so we don't take that part. So we can have a unique inverse, which is like this, right? And then, uh, uh, we can take the same you know, idea and the same concept and apply that restriction to the simple y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x. Let's start with the y equals sine of x. With the y equals sine of x, what do you think the restriction should be in order here? This is my y equal x, okay? And I have a sinusoidal wave that comes like this, starts at zero, goes to one, back to the midline, back in the negative in quadrant three, back to uh, 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 minus one, and then back to uh, uh, midline or zero at two pi, right? And then if I am to look in the negative, I also have my four quadrant uh, repeating the cycle here in the negative. But what do you think is the best restriction? Usually in many of your textbooks, the restriction the, on the domain for uh, your y equals sine of x, if you want to look at the inverse and find the arc sine, is minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. You might tell me, why is that? That's simply because at pi over 2, you have the highest value that the sine can achieve, which is 1. And at minus pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2, if you're going in the other direction, you have the lowest if, if absolute value, you know, the lowest negative value that a sine function can achieve. So that's why it's always great. And most test textbook and mo most math teacher and mathematician, they like that. They like to restrict it. They like to do the first restriction right in here between uh, uh, your uh, pi, uh, pi over minus pi over two and plus pi over two. So if I go and I say, this is my one, and this is my minus one. And we said that pi over two is like thinking of it. If I want to, you know, include it with the one on the same number line on the same x axis or y axis, what do I do? I simply 
think of it as 3.141592, you know, and it doesn't end. So almost three, three divided by two is one and a half. So if this is one, this is your pi over two, okay? That's why I put it here. And this is my minus pi over two. Now, we said an inverse function over the y equal x. We think of it as something, uh, I, as if I have a function like this, y equal to x plus one, and all I do is just, I swap the x for the y and I solve. So this becomes x equal to y plus one. So the domain becomes the range and the range becomes the domain because I swap. Because you're swapping the coordinate, domain becomes range, range becomes domain. This has, Again, there is no memorization here. Because you're swapping the coordinates, the domain becomes, it's common sense, becomes the range and the range becomes the domain. So if I go back here, you know, where is my sine here? Sine function. My domain, first let's draw, first, if this is one, let's draw the, the function. Uh, domain is between minus pi over two Domain, again, for those of you who forgot, you're looking at the graph from left to right. Your minus infinity is on the left. Your plus infinity is on the right. And you are restricting. We're doing a restriction here. So we're starting here and we're going here. Range, we're looking from bottom to top. And first, minus pi over 2 is right here. Okay? But in order for me to go to, I have to draw my plus 1. I imagine I'm drawing, you know, my regular y equals sine of x. So this whole thing at pi over 2 is at 1, right? It goes like this. And then now it's going to come back right here at pi, but I don't need that, to 0 because sine of pi is 0, but I don't need that. I need to go down here. What happens down here? Down here, the same thing happens. At minus 1, I get the minus pi over 2. So this is my original function. Now, in order for me to get the y equal, in your, book, in your books, again, they, they like to say minus 1. I don't like that. I like you to use the arc sign. I don't want you to confuse. This is not a power of minus 1. Okay, so uh, y equal arc sine, the inverse, we're swapping the domain, so this uh, x, uh, uh, this between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2 becomes what? Becomes the range of the new function. So the range of the new function becomes what? So let's, let's first say this is y equal sine of x. It has a domain between minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2. And what is what is the range of the original one? The range is between, we restricted it. It's already restricting itself. There is no amplitude. A is 1. So it's between minus 1 and plus 1, right? So my y here is between minus 1 and plus 1. Now for the arc sign, it's going to be the opposite. So if this is my, this is going to be the pi over 2, and this is going to be my minus pi over 2, and now it's going to be the totally opposite. So I'm going to go, uh, uh, my uh, domain is going to be, the stretch is going to be between minus 1 and plus 1. So when I go this way, I go like this. This is the point I'm going to go to. So this is my stretch, and if I go down, I cannot go beyond the minus 1. There you go. So, and there you go. If you look at it, it's a reflection. Excuse my drawing, but it's a reflection over the y equal x. That means we're swapping x and y. In this situation, we are swapping what's x and y. A fraction, which is your sine and cosine are fractions, you know, opposite divided by hypotenuse or adjacent divided by hypotenuse. We're swapping that with the angle. So that's why when we put it, we spit back, we get back the angle. Okay? And uh, the domain, let's write the domain and the range here. Now we swap y equal arc sine of x, arc sine of x. 
the domain now becomes what what the range was so minus one and plus one and the range becomes y is between minus pi over two and plus pi over two if we look at the graph look at the range now the range is between minus pi over two and plus pi over two what was the domain in the in the original one and uh, uh, the ra uh, the domain of the new one of the arc sign is between minus one and plus one what was the range in the original one okay let's go back let's go now to the y equal cosine of theta or cosine of x and again if you want to think about this is a equal one here don't forget that b dx b equal one also you have this you know you're in the first cycle in the basic cycle the two pi the period equal two pi your domain is what between zero and if you want to restrict it your domain is actually minus infinity plus infinity by why do where do we restrict it here what do you think you know should the restriction be in most of your textbook it's zero and pi because why because at zero and pi at zero cosine has its largest value which is plus one and at pi cosine has its lowest value which is minus one so domain equal x in order to make it a one-on-one -on -one, in order to get that unique inverse function otherwise you won't get a unique inverse function because you cannot just catch the end of that endless graph okay just very simply so between x is between 0 and pi I come here and I say y equal r cosine now I'm sorry cosine of x now this domain becomes the range so the range now of this one of this new one is y is between 0 and pi let's sketch it so you will get a better idea of what I'm talking about so it's all I, all we're doing is swap and solve here we have between 0 and pi so if this is pi this is 0 you know this is if this is pi okay, this is pi over 2 if this is pi over 2 my 1 is somewhere here right and in a um, normal, and this is my minus one, sorry, right here maybe. In a normal cosine function, you know, y equal cosine of x or cosine of theta, what happens? It, the, it starts right here because uh, cosine of zero is one. So we start right here and cosine of pi over two is zero. So we come like this, right? But now our restriction is taking us underneath the x-axis. is between 0 and pi. This is the restriction. So we, what happens for, for the cosine underneath the x-axis, meaning in quadrant 2, meaning between pi over 2 and pi? It's negative. And right at pi, it's at minus 1. So this is right here at minus 1. So it comes like this, and it goes like this. So this is your original function. Now, if you are to this 0 pi, this is the domain of the original. It becomes the range. That means I have to look at it from bottom to top of the y equal r cosine of x. So I have to put my 0 here. Where is my pi? I keep going up. So this is my pi now. Okay. So this one becomes the range of the new one. And I also have to flip the ones. So I have to put ones here. So this is a one here. And this is a minus one here. Okay. And now uh, for this, look at it. So now I have between minus one, my domain becomes between minus one and plus one. How did I come up to this one? The range of the original was what of the original cosine function is between minus one and plus one so the domain of the inverse because i'm swapping coordinate is between minus one and plus one so i cannot get beyond this minus one and this is my point right here and i cannot get beyond this plus one i'm restricted here and i'm restricted in the range right here between here and here. 
and for the domain between here and here. So my inverse function of this y equal x, this is your y equal x, should be somewhere in this rectangle right here. It looks like a rectangle. If you look at it right here, like you coming down, so it should be, it, and it should, of course, go through your pi over 2. So this is 1, this is pi over 2, okay? So because at, you know, uh, uh, pi over 2, this is when you have a, it's comes like this, and... Here we go. You have to come back all the way to one. I'm sorry, it's not that great. You know what? I'm going to do it for you on the board. So this way um, you can see it better. We're going to do it on the board. Here, let's do it on the board because this is important. Not There is nothing for you to memorize here. But again, it's just a when you plug in that R cosine in your scientific calculator and you're like okay okay you need to always keep in the back of your mind that you're swapping x and y but here you don't have a regular x and y you have a ratio and an angle you're swapping this ratio and the angle and here let's let's go like this this is my zero this is my pi this is my pi over two and, and when I say y equal cosine of x, I have a domain restricted between 0 and pi, we said. So x is between 0 and pi because the highest happens for the cosine when cosine of 0 is 1 and cosine of pi is minus 1. That's why the best restriction, and you see that in most books, is between, it's between 0 and pi. And then if this is uh, pi, this is your 1, this is minus pi over 2, this is my minus 1. And so, and then of course for a cosine, your range is what is between minus y is between minus 1 and plus 1. Okay, so and I do have a 1 pi over 2, 1. So for a regular cosine function, you start at 1 and you come down to pi over 2. And if this is here, this is my minus 1 and minus pi over 2. And right at pi, right at pi, you are, you are at minus 1. This is your regular y equal cosine of x. Okay? Now, and this is your... Let's take a different color now. And in blue, we're going to draw y equal our cosine of x. Now, this domain becomes the range. So I'm going between 0 and pi. So I'm, I'm looking from bottom, from minus infinity to plus infinity. But all I need is from here to here, actually. That's why it becomes like a rectangle, like I said. Okay? And if I'm looking from left to right, the range of the original minus 1 plus 1 becomes the domain of the new one. So I'm looking between here, minus 1, and 1. So that's why I said we have to look in this rectangle right here. You see the rectangle? The rectangle goes from minus 1 all the way to pi, pi, plus 1. This is your rectangle, and down there it's at 0 right here. Okay, so in this rectangle, the restriction happens, and I am to draw my uh, inverse arc cosine of x. Okay, so basically, I have to go from 1 to pi over 2, like this. And right here, the maximum is pi and minus 1, right here. And if you look at that, now you can look at it and you can say, oh yeah, okay, this looks like the inverse of this one. So the first one, your y equal cosine of x is right here. 
And the second one, y equal r cosine of x is right here. Okay? And now it looks like we're swapping. We're swapping coordinates and we're swapping domain and range. And we're swapping what you do in your um, a scientific calculator, your TI-84, or the other ones. All you're doing is just you're putting that arc sine of uh, 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 one half equal 30 degrees. You're swapping the one half, the 0 0.5, the fraction, uh, this, di the, this division of the opposite side by the total vector or by the hypotenuse, and you're getting back the angle, the angle that is related to time, because this is a, a, a function of frequency times time, okay? I believe that looks much better. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it the way it's supposed to be done on the tablet. So let's go back to the tablet, and let's do um, the last thing here is we're going to do the tangent, of course, and we're going to stop. The tangent is a lot easier, you will see. I should be able to do it on the tablet now. So y equal tangent of x. Again, the restriction that we do here, the restrictions are very easy. You know, the restriction are your vertical asymptotes because y equal tangent of x is what is sine divided by cosine. And your vertical asymptote is where the cosine is zero. Remember that? So if when we are to draw, we go like this. Actually, let's do it. Okay, first, let's figure out this restriction is between right here minus pi over two. So your x there is not there is no equal now because at pi over two and minus pi over two there is no solution, right? So the restriction is between minus pi over two and and plus pi over two. With, we don't put the equal, okay? And the range is minus infinity plus infinity. So the range go, goes all the way. So when you flip them, when you swap the coordinates and you flip them for y equal arc tangent of x or of theta, what happens? The domain of this one is the range of the original one. So that's minus infinity plus infinity. And the range of this one is what is range. This is the y, the f of x, the function, the sketch that you're sketching going from bottom to becomes what? Because becomes, I'm sorry, there is no equal again, uh, minus pi over two and plus pi over two. Okay. So this becomes minus pi over two and plus pi over two. Okay. In order to draw that, that's actually very easy to draw. You know, I will be able, I promise, to do it here now. So let's go this way. And let's do it like this. And let's choose, you know, this is my 0, 0. And if I choose my minus pi over 2 here, minus pi over 2 and plus pi over 2, and I have my vertical asymptotes, the function variation where there is no solution. And like I said, this is my tangent, y equal tangent of x of tangent of theta. This is my quadrant one. In quadrant one, what happens? They're both positive, so it's going to go to plus infinity. In quadrant four, one of them is positive and one is negative, so the tangent is negative. It goes to minus infinity, so I'm good. Now, uh, I'm going to flip that, so all I need to do is just put my minus pi over 2 here and plus pi over 2 here, and now the vertical asymptote becomes like this, horizontal, okay? So that's why I said this is more easier, and it becomes like that. So this one goes like this. And this becomes like that. And if you are to draw your y equal x, it's somewhere here. And you see that that y equal x gives you, you know, it's the reflection now. This is your arc tangent, y equal arc tangent of x. Okay? 
Uh, very simple, you know, there is, I just want you, there is nothing to memorize here, just to understand that this is the same like swapping the coordinates. You're swapping the fraction. The answer that you get when you do sine of 30 equal 1 divided by 2, a half, or sine of 60 equals square root of 2 divided, square root of 3 divided by 2, you're swapping that with the angle. That's all you're doing, basically. There is nothing uh, uh, more than that to it. And after, when you swap, you swap also the domain and the range. So domain of the original one becomes the range of the arc sine or arc tangent. And the range of the uh, original one becomes the domain of uh, the new arc tangent. So that's why for the arc tangent of x or of theta, uh, the domain is the range of the original one. So if we look at it from left to right, it becomes it goes from minus infinity all the way to plus infinity. And that's how you uh, uh, solve this or you try to conceptualize it. Okay. And we're going to leave the phase shifts, the vertical and the horizontal phase shift, and some other uh, questions that I got from uh, some students on YouTube who are who started to follow us um, for the next lesson that we're going to, you know, hopefully do later this afternoon or tomorrow. Okay. Thank you for watching.